Bannister brothers, two of Canada's most infamous murderers decades ago. Both of them uh, were hung and buried on this property. Because they had burnt down a house in the woods, um, had killed the family, and kidnapped the baby. Oh my god. What? It, it just. The it, SLS. Oh, it literally. It's, it's back. It's picking it, up something. It did it seconds after you said it. Seconds. Oh my god, I just saw someone peek from behind that wall. On my life. Someone just peeked from behind that wall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, like seriously. May, is that you? Thank oh. you. <laughs> I'm in this cell right now. This is the room that apparently a lot of people experience stuff in. Oh, what the, what the f Holy f I swear I just saw someone in the darkness right there. <laughs> Guys, I'm not even joking right now. The amount of energy that is around me in this exact moment is unbelievable. You must get sick of doing all the tours and stuff, eh? I could do a tour in my sleep now. <laughs> she knows everything. So I just want to mention right now, in case I didn't add the footage, Jeff got stuck in a cell. Oh. <laughs> it did not open. And <laughs> Natasha had to come and free the man. So just want to say that's how this night has started. My heart was worried for the guy. I, I was, I was, <laughs> I, I was, I, 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 I will be really honest. I was panicking. <laughs> I was really panicking. Like I'm gonna spend the whole night in a cell. <laughs> the most creepiest part of this prison. Yeah. And probably tomorrow, a poor fellow's gonna come in <laughs> and take a blowtorch and get me out. Of here. <laughs> I, like, I don't know. I honestly thought we were gonna be spending the night trying to get the man out. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy. And Natasha has agreed to do a tour for us. Yeah. I guess we'll start on the light side and work our way down to the darker stuff. Cell block here is called the light side for a few different reasons. Uh, this used to house not overly uh, like violent criminals or anything like that. So it was two inmates per cell, uh, two cots, a toilet, and a sink. And these guys were locked up for 20 hours of the day. Um, we have left all of the original artwork on the walls in the cells in this hallway here. And this is also our bed and breakfast. So people can come and spend the night here in an authentic 150 year old jail cell um, with original artwork from inmates that were incarcerated here. Our guests are welcome to lock themselves in our cells in this hallway only. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> we have a few different I really setups. don't know what she means. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the pleasure of visiting Dorchester Jail a couple of times. The first time I went with one of my friends and we were simply just going as a girls trip. We had a little bit of camera equipment and we had some paranormal devices as well. Um, we just kind of wanted to suss the place out to see what all of the hype was about. So we get in there, we meet the owners. Immediately I'm feeling somebody like pinching my butt. And I looked at Natasha, one of the owners, and I was like, what is going on? And she said, this is normal. This is them trying to figure out who you are. So immediately I was like, this place is insane. There you go, guys. Look at this. It's really beautiful. Well, look at all the beddings and the sheets and everything. I can imagine being in these. It's crazy. Yeah, especially Just if can. you didn't get along with your cellmate, right? Like 20 hours is a long time to be locked up with somebody you don't care for. Especially with a toilet and a sink in there. And they didn't get any outside time? Uh, so for the four hours that they were allowed out of their cells each day, um, they could come and use the telephone that's in the hallway here. They would have access into the yard outside and they could come back in the common area here and have a shower, 
they could wash up, they could play cards. But um, surprisingly enough, um, before the facility closed in 1998, inmates, um, trusted inmates, they were allowed to go into the yard and they were actually able to play horseshoes, which I thought was incredibly kind of weird because you could do some damage with one yep. of those things. You know, <laughs> someone stay up. It makes it. <laughs> right? Heck yeah. of a weapon. Like. <laughs> so this is called the dark side for a few different reasons. It's obviously a little bit darker over here. Um, this is where the worst of the worst inmates were housed up until the death penalty was abolished in the early 60s. Uh, so from 1875 right up until about 1959, this is where the worst were housed individually for 23 hours of the day. Uh, the locking mechanisms on the doors in this hallway are a little bit more intense. Not only were they locked here, they were also padlocked up at the top here. Oh. Uh, these guys were actually forbidden to speak to one another. Uh, so what they would do is they used to knock on the walls to communicate. And you can still occasionally hear a little bit of residual knocking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which can be a little unsettling at times. So that night, Jen and I kind of got acquainted with the, the space, mostly the main area where you can stay if you end up booking a night there. So we went in some of the cells, we got some really great activity with using dowsing rods. But the strangest thing that happened to us while we were investigating was she had a GoPro, I had a GoPro, and our GoPros powered down at the almost exact same time. They were pretty much new batteries. We flicked things back on, there was at least 50% on the cameras. So. That was very strange. We then went to the common room and we sat there and we did the Estes method for a while. And once we had completed that session, we believed that we were speaking to somebody who knew who the Bannister brothers were. Now the Bannister brothers were two young men who had low IQs and they were in death row because they had burnt down a house in the woods, um, had killed the family and kidnapped the baby. Now, because they had super low IQs, I, I can't 100% say they knew what they were doing and the impact that that would have on their lives. So there's no lights inside of the cells, just whatever natural light comes in through the windows here. And this one here is exactly what it would have looked like for the inmate. So prior to the death penalty being abolished, inmates could spend up to 10 years in this, in this cell here. And this is where I got stuck. How do you feel? <laughs> feel better with the door open. <laughs> It's going to be non-stop. Yeah. For me personally, this hallway here is, is the least comfortable part of the building for myself personally. It's cold here. It's a little cold. The energy is a little bit heavier yeah. over here. A little bit... Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a different vibe over in this hallway here. Um, so another reason why they call this the dark side is because right now we are actually directly beneath death row. So when they used to hang people inside of the jail, they would start upstairs and come through a little trap door in the ceiling here and actually stop right here where we're standing. So if you were in this hallway, you got to see and hear everything every time somebody was hung. And so if you were in solitary here or one of these two cells here, you got prime time spot and you got to see everything but they didn't want the other six men in this hallway to feel left out so what they would do is they would have the nurse come downstairs here she would pronounce the, the inmate deceased and then the guards would cut the rope that they were hung from they would place them on a gurney and then they would wheel them up the hallway in front of these six guys wow. take them out into the yard and bury them basically right outside of their window so there's a very good chance that if you were housed in this hallway, you were waiting to go upstairs yourself and be executed. So it was just a gentle reminder of what's about to come. So this was the hole here. <clears throat> it's just, it was just a concrete slab on the floor. There was no blankets, mattress, pillows, none of that. It was a completely dark room. 
Uh, there was no toilet in there, so they were given a pot to use and uh, they were fed bread and water for the up to two weeks that they could spend in here. I personally have tried to challenge myself just to stay two minutes in, even in the daytime down there with it. No. Yeah. I'm like 10 seconds and my skin's crawling and I'm like, hey, yeah, that's good. That's good enough for me. Um, especially at nighttime though, it's so dark in there. You can barely see your hand in front of your face. I couldn't imagine the inmates were coming out of there any kind of sane. Any kind of sane. Jeff is like, okay. Jeff's right in there. <laughs> there is no lock on that one, so we can't get locked in. Oh, oh good. <laughs> Save us a heartbreak. Right? <laughs> Is it just like the one, I've never actually really been in there. Is it just the one little cell? Or ah, it's really, it's what really do you feel, man? The first part of the Their bed was, was that here. concrete slab yeah. right there. Then imagine yeah. someone getting executed in the morning, two in the morning, yep. three in the morning right here. Drop right here. Yeah. yeah, that'll wake you up in a hurry, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Other mother, she was known to be a peddler. She wanted money. She was greedy. She would set things up so that she could make more money. She maybe was a thief. Um, and she had tasked these boys, her own sons, to go and commit these crimes. So they were set up for death row. And once my friend Jen and I were making that connection, we got this overwhelming feeling of sadness. Um, she is not one to to get like that at all. So I knew something was wrong. I knew something was off. Then we decided we were gonna go upstairs to the death row cells. Uh, we, we needed to take some time. We couldn't immediately do it. So we had to kind of regroup, um, gather up some courage and finally go upstairs to the death row cells to have a chat with hopefully the Bannister brothers. Now, when we started to establish connection, we wanted to make sure that the Bannister boys knew that we were not there to give them any guilt or grief. We were just simply there to talk to them. And if they had anything to say, or if they wanted to be entertained by us or what have you. So once we started to feel um, a little bit better about our surroundings, we got more into the questions. We didn't have anything really overwhelming happen while we were up there other than just the, this very calming, peaceful feeling. So we spent the night, stayed the night, slept through the night, and the first thing in the morning we went to the dark side cells, which are on the first floor. And even though there's a little tiny bit of daylight trickling through the small little windows that are there, it is still one of the most ominous and creepy hallways I've ever investigated in. So her and I are walking down towards the very end of the hallway, kind of right below where um, any executions would have taken place. So there was a trap door. If you were one of the unlucky ones that had a surrounding cell around that trap door, you would see some very gruesome things. a cell structure. It was cut out after an inmate had actually escaped and um, strangled a guard to death in the hallway here. Oh, oh. Uh, so in... Have you seen the bar? When did she escape? Uh, around 1949. Oh. Um, so the death penalty was still fully, um, fully optional here at the jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he wasn't, the gentleman that escaped, he fashioned a rope out of his sheets and he was able to unlatch the loft and let himself out. And what he did is he waited around the corner here for the guard to come down and check on him. And when he came around the corner, he nabbed him with the rope and strangled him to death. Oh. Well, he has got his keys at the end of the hallway there, trying to figure out which key it was to be able to get out. And the other two guards that were upstairs, they heard the commotion with the keys and they knew it wasn't uh, wasn't usual for them to be making that much noise. And so they came downstairs and sure enough, the inmate was at the door there and the guard is laying here. And that guy was taken directly upstairs and hung on the spot. There was no court, there was no trial. They dealt with everything internally. I, I don't think I've heard that story. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah, I heard wow. that uh, two years ago from an old guard that used to work up at the penitentiary. And I hear that there's an angry spirit there. And I'm gonna tell you why I believe there is one there too. Get to the end of the hallway and something pulls the back of my shirt into one of the cells. And I screeched and I left and I said, I never want to go back in there ever again. And 
we're just gonna, you know, fast forward a little bit. And I am investigating there for a second time. And this time I'm there with a paranormal investigative team that has a TV series called Haunted on East Lake Community TV here in Canada. The first thing the director did was put me in one of those dark cells by myself. I was in there for 30 minutes and I started to question my own sanity. It's not an easy place to get in and out of. And if I was thinking more along the safety side of things, if I needed help, I don't think anybody could have come to help me. So I just had my dowsing rods. I was asking a lot of questions about who could have been there with me. And I definitely felt like I started to poke the bear. So then we ended up taking those dowsing rods and we went outside and I wanted to see if I could locate where the Bannister brothers were buried because there's a lot of unmarked graves there on the property and nobody really knows where they are. So I conducted my own investigation by asking questions when I got outside. Are you in front of me? Fans out for now. Are you behind me? Fans in, crosses for yes. So as I kept asking more questions, I would ask, you know, things like the proximity because I started thinking about how large one casket would be. And I say one casket because both Bannister brothers were lowered into one casket. And unfortunately, two grown men couldn't typically fit in one casket. So they did have to make modifications to the bodies in order for both of them to fit. So now, now um, putting pieces together, a lot of people have said that they hear like booted footsteps pacing up and down the hallways. It's just the guard doing his rounds of the building. So that yeah. makes me feel kind of safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you can hear the booted footsteps and occasionally you can hear the sound of the jail keys jingling. Yeah. Now for us personally, um, I, when I carry the keys, like you guys saw earlier, I carry them taut so that they don't make any noise. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like if I was trapped in eternity in a jail cell and I could hear the keys that are going to free me, I'd probably get quite upset. Yeah. So out of respect for those guys, we carry them taut just so that they don't make a bunch of noise and kind of upset them. So I understand. Yeah. 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 We try and be respectful. It was their home long before it became ours and then we like to cohabitate nicely with them. So we, we do what we can to make sure that they're, they feel respected and, and seen and heard. So. Uh, this is the two boys and their mother. Uh, this is when their mother was actually incarcerated here in this jail. So she was actually in the first room in this hallway here. And then we have copies of their death certificates and actually right here, it says that they're buried out in the jail yard. So we asked the province, hey, we, we, we seen something. And <laughs> no, no, there's nothing back there. Don't go digging around. That's mm -hmm. the government for you. And then this here is an arrest warrant from 1893. A uh, gentleman owed a fine of $31.75. We found that upstairs in the attic. Wow. Um, that was a buttload of money back in 1893. Yeah. Uh, so he ended up coming to the jail here and he actually spent 40 days in the dormitory here. So this was one giant jail cell that used to house up to 30 men. And this is where all the non-violent petty offenders were housed. because this is where the stabbing was, huh? Yes. That's kind of a crazy story because he was downstairs in the dark side. He was down there for like a year on his best behavior so he could get transferred over into the light side. He was down in the light side for like six months and then he got transferred up here and the night he got transferred up here, he stabbed that guy to death. Oh. Mm. And I love that. Like you must have really, really wanted after that guy to be oh, on your P's yeah. and Q's for a year and a half to come up here and get him. Like yeah. what happened to him afterwards? <clears throat> he was he was taken, I believe he was taken to the penitentiary. Oh, okay. after that, because that was after they abolished the death penalty. So this room was uh, 15 bunk beds and up to 30 men in here. Now this is where Hubby put some of his collection. 
the, uh, the bench there just underneath the windows. That's a pretty incredible piece of history. So it's uh, actually an underground railroad bench that was used during the 1800s to free the slaves. Oh. It's, it's incredibly hard to imagine two or three people inside of this tiny space here. Wow to get to freedom. Exactly, the things the things we do, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, when the bench is flipped on its back and you can see underneath, it's a, it's a Bible, it was made out of a Bible crate that came from Jerusalem. So that's a, a pretty special piece we're, we're wow, pretty proud to have. Beautiful. Yeah, that's an amazing pretty great cool piece, of history. Great piece yeah. of history. And it predates the jail by about uh, 25 years, so. Wow. Yeah, about 1850s. So up in behind there now is our kitchen, but this actually used to be the guard's bevel. So they would have one guard sit here to watch the 30 men that were in here, and then they would have the other two guards do the rounds of the other cell blocks. Um, but now this is Hubby's Oddities collection there. I was kind of mentioning too, because of all the stuff that Bill has, real people, like those are real people, this could really be a source of the energy coming out. Oh, up a lot of it. And like, I do find like, the, the more items that get brought into the jail, the energies come along with it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, good, bad, nice, not so nice, yeah. Okay. Yeah. These here are OJ Simpson's clothing. So these are actually the clothing that he was wearing when he purchased the knife that was allegedly, wink wink, used in the murders. Um, so very conveniently, Whoa. he was filming this movie called Frogman and his character's name was Bullfrog. And while they were filming this movie, he was actually taught by a Navy SEAL how to execute somebody from slitting their throat from one end to the other. Mm. That's exactly how they ended up passing away. Um, so yeah, we have a little piece of OJ here in jail where he belongs. <laughs> is this what Bill picked up? It is, yeah. Where did he yeah. pick it up? Um, he got that uh, online. Those are his shoes? His shoes, his shorts, and his shirt. That's crazy, right? Wow. Wow. And we actually found um, video evidence on entertainment television last summer of him wearing this stuff. Oh! Wow. Yeah. Damn. So just to have that extra provenance is very nice. Yeah. Wow. So this room that we're going to head into now, uh, this was actually a female cell. So this room used to be attached to the room beside us here, and they'd have up to eight women in these two rooms here. Uh, mostly thieves, prostitutes, bootleggers, they were housed here for short periods of time. But this room, May Bannister was incarcerated in for six measly months. Um, she was supposed to be incarcerated for three years, but she ended only up serving six months. Um, so she was in here, so we call this our May Bannister suite. She's the mother of the boys. Yeah, yeah the mother of the two boys that got hanged together. So, yes, yeah. in six months, she just let out free. But yeah, yeah, she was just let go. It should have been her. Right, and that's exactly how I feel. I'm a mother. I don't know how you take advantage of your, your mentally disabled children like that and like go on and live your the rest of your yeah. life. Yeah. For me, so um, I do get a little bit of satisfaction out of knowing that she actually had to watch the whole 21 minutes while oh. those boys suffered. And they I hope made it her watch? Her for the whole, oh. Yeah, I hope it haunted her for the rest of her life. Yeah, oh. yeah I hope she had dreams every night of it. And their, their sister, she, she she's partially to blame too because when the boys were leaving with the baby, pardon me, <clears throat> she had convinced them to set the house on fire. And oh. in doing so, that's how the mother the, the, and another baby ended up dying um, outside in the cold trying to escape the fire. So yeah, that's that's cool. Cool. Uh, uh, she, she, um, like, she ratted everybody out, so she got, a, like, a plea deal. And when we first moved here, this room was part of the yoga fitness room, and there was a 150-pound punching bag that used to hang from the ceiling there, and it used to swing by itself all the time. <gasps> wow. So I told Bill, like, I can't walk past that room, see that thing swinging, when I know I have to go into and through death row to get to the laundry room. Yeah. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> if you want clean clothes, please take that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair train, yeah. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, this this room here, specifically that wall, um, my two and a half year old told me that that's where the portal that her friend comes through. Yes, Miss Abigail. So that, uh, yeah, that was, I, I wasn't scared or anything. It was just like, whoa, a portal? You, you can't barely talk. Like she was very speech delayed and everything. And then yeah, this is where the portal is. Whoa. Yeah. 
okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we do get a, a bit of activity in here. You get cold spots and stuff. And um, a lot of women, they, they tend to feel like nauseous in this room here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, when the, that thing hanging from the ceiling there, that had to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, no, I don't blame you. <laughs> me out. And then this here is death row. So when, uh, when executions were performed, they would close and padlock this door here. They would also close and padlock this wooden door here. Right here where I'm standing is where the executions were performed. So there used to be scaffolding that used to be in the ceiling here, and this is where the noose would hang from. And then there was a trap door in the floor here. So you come out of your cell, you stand here, the executioner puts the noose around your neck, pulls the lever, and down you go into the dark side where we just were. Wow. So you got to see here everything. And if you were up here with somebody else, they got to see their feet too. Yeah, so they house these guys up here for about 30 days prior to their date of execution. Just the green box on the floor, no blankets, mattress, pillows, none of that because you could try and use those materials to harm or execute yourself and they didn't want you doing that. And then if you were particularly violent, mental health risk, and escape risk, they'd put you in here. Oh, so that's why the it's different. Yes. More heavy and it's also that. reinforced like that up in the ceiling as well so they can't try and tunnel up into the attic and get out that way. Oh yeah, because I remember last the bars go right on the ceiling, huh? I, but I, the only and ever time I've been up there was with you guys yeah. and I accidentally pushed the thing through the wall, through the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's from that? Yeah, yeah, I accidentally misstepped and pressed the pin down. So, oh. yeah, a bunch of pins to reinforce so, oh, it. Yeah, <laughs> for the metal. The metal pin. Yeah, because there's, there's a cage that just basically wrapped, like it's oh, all yeah. top. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, they weren't messing around, that's for sure. Yeah. No, no, they weren't. No, they weren't playing. Mm -hmm. And this is the mother of her sons? Yes, or? so this photo is actually taken right outside of the cell here, maybe 10 minutes before the, both of the boys were brought out to be hung. Um, you can actually see the hinge on the door just behind his head there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the floor that we're standing on now is about this much higher than the original hardwood floor that's underneath us. Mm -hmm. So when they uh, abolished a death penalty, they just covered everything up with all new flooring instead of just filling in the hole. And which... Which one was Arthur and which one was Daniel in? So Arthur's in here and Daniel's in here. Okay. Gentleman behind the mother, that's actually the executioner. Mr. Killam. Mm. Yeah. Mr. Fittingly Killam. enough, that yeah. was his name, yeah? Killam. Like Killam Drive in Moncton? Like <sighs> K-A-L-L-A-M. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Killam, okay. Yeah, in those days, um, executioners were also train conductors. Fun fact. So they used to travel across the country performing executions along the way. Only ever two executioners on duty at a time in all of Canada. So they would what? start at BC and stop at all the, the chain yeah. stations and, and come up and perform their duties and go back down and carry on to the next place. Just casually yeah. too, like like wow. as if it's a normal thing to be killing people along right. the way. And There's probably even a couple of places that investigated that probably that gentleman oh probably because oh, yeah. in, in the old sdg jail in uh, cornwall mm -hmm. um there's uh, uh and it's again he took cyanide uh, so he cheated the the head the noose but there's another one uh, peter balakon he was executed there and mm -hmm. he was buried in the yard but he was executed at Cardinal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very, very well could have been by the same guy. Yeah. yeah. Never know. Don't, I don't. I couldn't do that job. No. Me neither. No. No. Me neither. I got. I, I have, like people too much for all that. <laughs> yeah. I have too much good towards like humankind. Yeah, humankind. Human yeah. 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 That's why I was a UN peacekeeper. <laughs> Well, and that too, like that, so I, I personally, I feel a personal responsibility to Arthur and Daniel Bannister when people come here, um, because some people have a little bit of pre-existing knowledge about the story of the boys, and they come in here, oh, those boys were cold-blooded killers, they deserve to die, they deserve to suffer, not so much. Uh, let, me t let me tell you a, a little bit that was left out of the history books. 
Um, so in a lot of the literacy and stuff that's written about the boys, it often fails to mention that they were of diminished mental capacity because they were inbred. Um, when we first moved here, every for the first probably six or seven months that we lived here, every time I would come back into death row, before we had learned a whole lot about the story of the boys, every time I come back here past this wooden door here, it felt like there was somebody sitting on my chest in a <gasps> fight to catch a breath, fight to catch a breath. It drove me crazy. Trying to give a tour back here, I'd either have to go out on the fire escape or stand in the hallway and yell at everybody. <laughs> And the very same day, we found out it took 21 minutes for those boys to perish. It stopped. And I remember I came back here and I could get a full breath. And I just teared up like, okay, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Um, so yeah, I, I very much feel a personal responsibility to those boys to make sure that their story is told accurately. Mm -hmm. And not just what's in the history books. Back in 1936, people didn't know about mental health and cause and effect and inbreeding no. and stuff. No. And unfortunately, it was a different mindset back then and they didn't acknowledge it for what it was. And so they unfortunately just wanted to kind of do away with them, which is disgusting. We can't do that to people. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I... I connect with the with the boys um, and, and very much try and tell the accurate version of the story. Um, they were really not cold-blooded killers. They were not malicious young men. They were mentally handicapped children that were manipulated by their all-loving mother um, and it cost them their lives. So, yeah. I've met direct relatives of Arthur and Daniel Bannister. Um, a couple summers ago, this young man came here with his hair slicked back, just like it is in that photo there. Mm -hmm. And when this young man got out of his car, every hair on my body stood straight up because he looked identical to Arthur. Wow. wow. So he's, he's walking over here, and I, I had to apologize because I was looking at him right crazy. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I heard you do tours, and I said, I do. Come with me. So him and his wife, I brought them directly upstairs here. I didn't show them nothing downstairs. And his wife, she come around the corner and she sees the photo and her eyes get all big and wide. She's like, um, like, yeah, do you know who that guy is by chance? Yeah, that's my great, great uncle. <gasps> so their younger sister who ratted them out, her great grandson came here. <clears throat> now he told us that he is one of five boys and all four of his brothers have some varying form of disability that directly relates back to the inbreeding that took place almost 90 years ago. Wow. Still trying to weed it out of the bloodline. It's crazy how it stays in the bloodline for that long. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, almost 90 years. Like, and, and he said he doesn't want to have children because he's scared he might pass those genes along. Oh. Which is, which is, Understandable, yeah, incredibly yeah, sad, yeah, yeah. But, but but understandable. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's sad, but understandable, but sad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I, I definitely feel for those boys. So when people come in here with that mentality, I try and let them know that that's not what it is. Mm -hmm. It's not. If you have ill feelings, put them towards the mother, because that's where it should be. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah, she groomed her own boys, so exactly. Yeah. I don't see myself mean either to go and tell my kids to go and kill somebody just to get the baby. So it's I, to get money, no way. Yeah, yeah. No way. Just get the money. So, yeah. so uh, after I would ask, are you six feet to the right of me, or six feet to the left of me, or three feet in front of me, or three feet behind me, I do feel like I located where they're grave is um, and I'm really intrigued to see what Chelsea and Lamar come up with for their investigation as well because I do believe that this is something that they are also very interested in finding out. Um, I have not told them where my location for the Bannister Brothers is so this will be fun. So right now, what we've discovered is SLS Can is actually picking up an apparition right now, a full anomaly. So we're starting out here in the dark side, carrying on with our previous investigation to try and figure out where these boys are buried. How's it going, folks? I don't know if that was you or not. Probably. Just was. I just saw someone. Ivy. Ivy? I'm gonna put the cat over there. 
Did you notice that on the SLS, the spirit's not popping up now? Oh, no? Nope, he's not there anymore. He was, like, aggressively there. <sighs> he was aggressive. Mm, I didn't even notice that I said that. Oh my gosh, yeah. And the way his body movements were, it looked like he could have been potentially being aggressive with someone. Yep. And what if it was the inmate that strangled the guard? He was opposite. Like, opposite. Or the guard who was... Strangled by... Being strangled. So, I've lit up the flashlight. Can you... Gamble. Start? Gamble. Gamble. Yes, a gamble. Poker? Make the flashlight go off. Fully. Gamble with us and make the light go off. I just can. Thank you. Thank you. Did we find out who we're talking to right now? No. No. Nobody? If you're one of the boys, or even Abigail, can you appear on our SLS camera right now? That's actually going to map you out. It will show yourself to us. Can you do that for us, please? We're not going to hurt you. We want to show you to the world so people know you're still here. Or if you don't feel like showing yourself on the SLS, touch any of the devices. Wood. What do you mean by wood? Thank you. Can you tell us who we're communicating with? Who you are? Can you tell us your name, please? Pressure change. Yeah, I just saw it. Yeah. If you're May Bannister, can you appear on our camera? Just stand in the middle of the hallway for us, please. Just oh my god. What? It, it just... The it, SLS, oh, it literally... It's, it's back, it's picking it, up something. It did it seconds after you said it. Seconds. May, is that you? Please stand it the best you can. Stand the best you can in the middle of the hallway, please. Are you in the attic, May? Is that where you hide? Oh my god, the, the flashlight just turned on. <sighs> Quiet. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. Abominator. Abominator. Okay, sorry. we'll be quiet. We're sorry. We're okay. a little bit excited. Can you turn off the flashlight if it's you, May? May Bannister, if it's you, can you turn off the flashlight, please? All the way. Thank you. So May Bannister. Was it was Sit. it? Sit. Sit. Yes, we're sitting. We're all sitting. May, we will give you a hundred dollars if you are willing to talk about your side of the story and tell us exactly what happened. We'll even pay you some money. Yeah. We you wanted rent some money, you wanted Money, Office. we'll give you all the money you want. Just please appear for us in the middle of the hallway and show yourself to us, okay? This is crazy. Someone is right there. Mm -hmm. Someone is standing in the middle of the hallway. No man. No man. No, no man. We have that, that again. Word. We have that word upstairs. What does it mean? The thing is, the I, I don't remember. Oh, 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 someone appeared. Make, is that you? Yep. Again. That's me. Oh my god, the light. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So now that we're on the same terms, 
why did you make your boys do what they did? Amaze. Yes, we're amazed. But we want to know why you make your boys do that. Thank you. Goodbye. No, please stay. Why? We want to talk to you. Why don't you want to talk to us? Because we're on their side. Uh, because we're on the side of the law? Is that it? Someone just came up and yes at us again. Abigail, if if that's you, can you appear in the hallway, please? We're just trying to see who this is. And can you stand there for about five seconds for us? Kenneth. Who's Kenneth? Were you an inmate here? Insectum. Insectum. We need a full on library here. I know, we need to get a dictionary. Yeah. A Roman dictionary. A Latin dictionary, yeah. Abigail, can you please stand in front of the camera here over by the open door? I picked you up last time, okay? Same thing goes. Just stand there so we know it's you. Keep getting the sense that someone's behind us. We got a POV rolling there anyway, so. I think I'm very fixated on that right now. I don't think we're talking to the boys or, or no, we're not Abigail. Talking. Locked. Locked. This one. Oh, this you got locked in the. Hey. I got locked in the in the cell. Can you can you close the cell and lock it for us? Don't mind the flashlight on it. Don't worry about it. If you want to close the door and lock it, do it. I think it's this cell. What? This one. This is the only locked cell that they're not able to open. Or are you in the locked cell behind us? Flashlight just turned on. Didn't you saw it? Thank oh, you. Thank you. Wow. So is that confirmation? Are We're you all good? We're all good. Orb. Thing is, is We're that Abigail? Like, who are we talking to right One now? One sec. Is can you turn the flashlight off if you are in the cell that's locked behind us? <sighs> flashlight. Yeah. Just. Thank oh, you. Oh my gosh. Someone so, is right there right now. We should put something. Um, here, hold this. I got a K2 Sorry. and a POV. I got a I POV. Can, my hand can get in deep enough. I just don't want to put something in that we can't get out. You're gathering. Yeah, I know you are. You're gathering. Okay. I can reach that again after. Here, you know what? I got my K2 as well. We have some new devices for you that's in the locked cell. There's a little triangle on the bottom of the floor in the cell right there. If you go on the... Children are heard. Children are heard. If you go on the left side, it's gonna that like... That was her. That was her. That it's was Abigail. Her. I think it's Abigail. Okay. If you go on the left side, it's gonna light up what the hell? red. This thing just moved. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, this POV literally moved. Burrito. If you go on the right side, it's going to light up green. Do you understand? Can you go and touch it if you understand? Oh, would you get that cold breeze? Yeah. Would you like me to show you how to use it? Make something go off if you want me to show you how to use it. So if you touch it to make it go green, like how it is now, that will mean yes. And if you touch it or go near it on the other side, 
to red, that can mean no. Investigate. That's right. Yeah, that's what that's we're doing. Right. That's what we're doing. Yes. So it's going to reset itself. Once it resets, I want you to touch it if you understand how to use it. It's going to flash blue and it's going to, there you go. Now it's reset it. Can you show us that you understood how it works? Please. Don't be afraid. Everything here is harmless. It's just going to tell you that, tell us that you're here with us, okay? Exactly. Pain. Are you in pain? Wonderful. Yes, it's wonderful, but are you in pain? If you are in pain, you can use a triangle to, to show us that yes or no. Are you in pain? Oh, the flashlight turned on. Thank you. Hello. But can you come here and touch the triangle, please? If you understand how the triangle works, can you turn off the flashlight? Cave. Cave, Cave again? So we got on the live stream. Yes. Someone did say maybe the cave had something to do with the hole, which is right to the left right of us. There. That's the hole. Do you want us to go into the hole? If so, make any device go off. Do you want me to go in the hole? Turn off the flashlight if you want me to go in the hole. Oh. This light just turned off. What? This Ooh. light, yeah. yeah. Then you. Okay, I'm going. There it is. I'm in the hole. I understand what you say. Yes. Can you come near me, please? Can you come and touch that light I have in my hands? All you gotta do is let us know who we're talking to right now and what you want, okay? So we'll start with your name. Okay, this cell doesn't lock. That's correct. It means a bad lock. Oh, um, guys, just said Fagel. Were you one of the people executed here? Come and touch that green light I have in my hands. Touch it if you're one of the people executed right above us right now. Don't be afraid. I'm really a nice person. I just want you to touch that light I have in my hands. It's going to show me that you're here with me. Please. If you're one of the boys, can you touch that? Feel free to also appear on our cameras or stand in the hallway behind us. Honestly, we'll appreciate anything. I affect the animals. Pet hair. I affect the animals. There's one cat that There's a cat, and she sometimes, the cat will like look around. And... <laughs> <laughs> Are you making me fart? <laughs> <laughs> Like, that is not me just dropping my pants <laughs> it, it said earlier, it said earlier, laugh. That's right, it did, so, it did. Did that mean you laugh by cracking that joke? Did touch any of the devices, please. Please? We just want to talk to you. If there's anybody, anybody. Amber. Is there somewhere else you want us to go? Please tell us and we'll go. 
We're going to respect you. This is your home. We're just a guest in it for the night. Exactly. Phaedra. Phaedra. Whoa. That's spelled with that. Gaelic? It's like a weird letter number. It's like a backwards E and a no E. Mm, like old English. Yeah, that could be Super old English. Super old English, yeah. Are you speaking old English? Can you touch that green light in my hands if you're talking old English? English from the 19th century. Italic. 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 Wow. You know what's odd is I haven't been seeing like the stick figure come up on the SLS camera. I the know. way it was coming up before, it was like very present. Like very. But I feel something. I feel like a coldness here. That's me. I feel like a coldness, but I don't know. It's kind of like the energy migrated somewhere. Yeah, literally. Do you want us to move elsewhere? Because I don't feel tired anymore. Mm -mm, me neither. You know how we were feeling drained upstairs? Yeah. We might have to move and we'll come back maybe and try and catch this anomaly. Yeah. That seemed to pop up. Go left. Go left. Go left. I was, my left was, left was this way. No, but. Or was it talking to you, Jeff? Oh. Oh. Oh my God, the REM pod's going off right now. So are you talking to me to go left? So I'm gonna go left, like you She's here. She's here. And the light just turned on, the light just turned on. No way. She's here, it's either Abigail or the mom. Right. Grommet. You okay, Charles? Good? Yes. <gasps> it flashed. Can you touch that green light again, please? The flashlight's going crazy. You just act, it, it's cold here. You asked me to go left. I'm left. I'm right here. It's cold. Wait. Please, can you touch that green light in my hand? Who's that? Did anyone just hear the music? No. Doo, doo, doo. I just heard Patience. music. Like a music box. Can you come and touch that green light in my that green light in my hands? I feel that you're you're here with me. There you go. Whoa, whoa. Please, can you touch it again? Just come in front of it, please. Don't want to move it. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just on the edge. I'm just on the edge. Okay, okay, okay. Come, come near that light. Come near that green light right here, please. I know you're here. You told me to go left. I'm left. Please. Okay, I'm gonna turn it around. I move it slowly because I don't want... Maybe it's... If you're one of the inmates that spent time in here, one of the inmates that was in the hall, can you please do your best to touch that device? It will not harm you. Lay your hand on it. I don't want to scare you. <laughs> you Please. won't scare me. Don't worry. You won't scare me at all, okay? No. Just touch it. Please. Don't worry. You won't, you, you're, you're not scaring me. Want me to move it? Right here. Please? Come on, I know you touched it. Arthur, we came in contact with you before, earlier. Can you... Favor, yes, we're asking you a favor. Yeah, I'm asking for a favor. And guess what? I brought you a toy. If you want that car, you have to come and touch my light. Just put your hand over it, right here. Please. 
please. Prius. 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 That's a car. <laughs> I think it might say a Prius. Like a priest. In like that. a priest, yeah. I had a couple of... We might have to move. The energy seems yeah. to have subdued. Mm -hmm. The energy is... This is Allison. Whoa. What? What did that say? What? This Sit and Allison? listen, skeleton. Sit and listen. Where do you want us to sit and listen? Sit and listen, skeleton. Okay. You can't do skating nothing. I'm gonna leave it right there. Can you go and come and touch it? That was weird. I heard like a lullaby. I heard it too. Do do do. Yeah. Like, yeah. What was that? Do any of our technology make that? Audrey. That's recording still. The only flashlight. The Audrey. Hi, Audrey. Blinks is your camera. But it didn't blink. It was a music box. Yeah. Can you play that music again, please? Audrey, can you turn the light back on, please? It's like they're leading us all over the place. Wow. Turn the light on, Audrey. Can you turn on the, can you turn the, the light back on? I'm only eight. Oh, Abigail. Abigail's eight. Abigail is eight. Abigail's eight. Abigail is eight. Abigail, and are you with us? Abigail sings the music. Oh. Abigail, thank you. Can, if this is you, can you please stand in the hallway right there? Thank you so much. Adam. Adam. Just want to say thank you. Please stand in the hallway right now. Manus. 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 The light. Thank you, Abigail. Can Abigail. you turn it off, Abigail? If it's Abigail, shut that off, please. You've got to be kidding me right now. Come on. All the way off. You can do it, Abigail. Come on, darling. Abigail, you got this. You can do it. Come on. Shut it right off. Is this Adam? Turn it off if you're Adam. Kiss. kiss. Do you want me to blow you a kiss? I don't know. Oh my god! Well, there you go. Catch it! Catch wow, it. thank you. Thank you so much. Did you catch the kiss, Abigail? Can you let us know if you caught it? Touch any of the devices. You want me to blow another one? Okay. There you go. Catch it. Catch it. And put it on your cheek. You have got to be kidding me. It's crazy. We, that was Abigail right now. My life was short. Oh, yes. Because Abigail. I have a question for you. Why do you hang around here? Is it Amelia? Can we get your story? Please? Talk to us the best that you can, okay? Our devices are gonna pick up what you're saying to us in case you do not know. We wanna hear your story, okay? Also, too, I don't know if Amelia told you. I visit. Oh, oh she visits. You do visit. Oh. It's very nice that you visit. I don't know if Amelia told you, but you can also send me messages the same way that you send Amelia messages. I can receive them just the same as Amelia. We're all connected. Oh, oh my God. Monacos. Monacos. We're all connected. We're all connected. I wonder if she meant Abigail. like... Abigail. Can you go and touch that red light on the ground if you're still with us? You know the round thing with the metal stick? That makes pretty color and sound. Can you touch it? Limus. This is crazy. Limus. This is direct communication with Abigail. 
Limus. What do you mean, my limus? Also, you haven't appeared in the hallway for quite a bit. She's not in the hallway. Where did you go? Follow her. That's what you're getting? Mm -hmm. She follow wants her? us to follow her. Where do you want us to follow you? Around the corner. Out of the dark side. You want us to go out of the dark side? Can you touch any of the devices to, to tell us to go elsewhere? To go investigate elsewhere than in the dark side. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Thank you. Right there. Thank you so much. And pressure change on the EDI. It's Maleficium. outside. Patrinus. Wow. All right, well. Follow me. Maleficium. All right, well, we're gonna leave this recording, okay? We're making our way over now, okay? We'll go to the other side. Holy smokes, this is crazy. There we go, yeah. Many devices all around. He's here. He's here. He's here? Daniel or Arthur, are you here with us right now? Yeah, who's here? Is it Arthur or Daniel? So, boys, we set something up here for you. We have both of your pictures and one device that's laying in front of each of your photo. If you can tell us who we're talking to by making that device go off in front of your photo, that would be great. So touch your picture. Whoever we're talking to, go touch your picture. Daniel, are we talking to you? If so, go towards your photo. Or Arthur, are you here with us right now? If so, go touch right near your photo. That'll show us that you're here. The temperature has gone up a lot. It was 555. Yeah. And now it is 564. We have devices in here as well, okay? Just the same thing. It won't hurt you. It's going to communicate with us. Beautiful. Beautiful. Great. And probably because we didn't really introduce ourselves. I know that you know already my friend Leomar in Chelsea. My name is Jeff. Actually, it's really is Jean-Francois, but everybody, all my friends call me Jeff, so. If you guys remember, last time we were here, we wanted to figure out where you were buried, okay? This isn't for anything that's gonna harm you or do anything to your name. We just personally wanna know where you're buried. And we wanna know where you're buried. Do I spare you? No, you No, don't not scare really. Us. Thank you, Flash. Oh. We, no. we want to know where you're buried because we think that you guys deserve recognition of where your resting place is. We understand that you were innocent in all of this and it wasn't your fault. So Natasha and Bill here, the owners of this jail, want to give you, you a proper place. Can you help us give you a proper place where you're resting? If even go say a prayer on your tomb, so you can go to the light. Arthur, are you able to answer my question for me? Did you not want to do it? If you didn't want to do it, can you touch any of the equipment that you see in the cells? It can be yours or your brother's, okay? If you were forced and did not want to do the crimes that you did, please touch one of them the best that you can. 
any devices. Eli. We really want to speak to the Bannister brothers. We're open to speaking to the other spirits and souls here, but we're really hoping to speak with the Bannister brothers tonight. Arthur and Daniel, please, we want to help you. Do you want help? Do you? Do you hear that? That was my stomach. Oh, okay. It sounded like, like the cell kind of moved. That was my, my stomach felt... <laughs> That was really, it kind of sounded like, like creaking though. Yeah, I know, but... Like right there. It was mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who was my baby? <laughs> Come into my baby. If you want help, can you please make any device go off? Anything at all. Whenever you have the energy to do. If you want help with closure. To help you pass on. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Do you want to pass on? Do you want us to help you pass on? I don't know if you weren't believers, but I don't know if you want to go see God. But for that, we have to help you pass. No, oh, the temperature is from 55 to 57. Two degrees. Gain two degrees since we're here. We settled here. Did you hear that behind me? Yeah, that, yeah. Some, someone, someone, just someone, touched, just... someone just touched this. Yeah. May, did you just touch that? Did you touch your picture, May? May Bannister, did you touch your picture? Make the light go off if that was you, May. You must know where your sons are buried. But even in our live stream, though, on the live stream said, where are my kids or I can't find my kids or something. What where are my children or something like that, yeah. What if, what if May can't find them? She hasn't found them because they just like, screw my mom for doing this. I don't want to see my mom in the afterlife. Do you know what I'm trying to say right yeah. now? Yeah. yeah. Do you not want to talk to your mom or see your mom in the afterlife? Have you ran away or anything like that? Can you answer one of those by by hitting any of the devices in the cell, okay? You can answer any of those questions. I'll say them again. Did you run away? Or do you not want to see your mother in the afterlife? <laughs> oh! Holy crap! Oh my bad. god! Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. So, so that's a yes. Yep. Arthur, do you understand what your mother did to you? Make it go off if you do understand. Pact him. Pact him. You want to do a pact? Where is that? Where is the red pot? Red pot. You want to do a pact? Is that it? Do you want to do a pact with us to help you pass over? To get through the light? To go say a prayer on your tomb? If it's that, can you touch any of the devices, please? It will show us that you want help to cross over. Harold. Harold. Did your mom knew somebody that was named Harold? Please, boys, 
We want to help you. And it wasn't you. No, it wasn't moving. Even though you just knocked your foot on the ground and nothing went off. No, no and I was standing still. I know. So these boys do not want to see their mother. That's my impression. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't either. Which makes sense because our live stream, which is still up to this very moment, the spirit box said that. <gasps> so, Grandpa, do you forgive your mother? I wouldn't if I were you, but... Me I neither. Mean, I don't know. It's been some time. You guys have passed. Do you forgive her? It's okay if you didn't. If you forgave her, make the light go off. The flashlight. If you didn't forgive her... <gasps> what? 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 Flashlight. Little boy around you. Little boy? Oh! Little boy! So, you oh. forgave your mom. Okay. This could have been Arthur though, cause... You're not... Oh my god. Or Daniel. Someone's strong right now. Someone's really strong. My eyes are like heavily watering. Um... Okay. You forgave your mom. That's really big of you. Yeah, but you're still not around her. So are you at peace with what happened? What I'm picking up is that like they, they're not upset with their mom anymore. They don't want to hold a grudge, but they're, they want to move on from it and they're at peace, but I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't understand. So they come and go. Yeah. They really come and go. Where are you guys right now? You're not with us right now. Where'd you go? Make the light go off if you want to cross over. You're hiding. I know. Yeah. It's a lot at once, they I understand. They may not be in the cell as much. They may just be somewhere else or... Don't be afraid. Nobody is here to harm you. We are friends. I have two kids at home. I have a boy and a girl. If some of us go alone in different areas, do you feel more comfortable communicating that way? Do you want us to go alone? Do you want to talk to any of us alone, I mean? If you do want that, we will spend time alone with you in different parts of this jail, okay? Just touch one of the devices for a yes. Any device, if you want us to go along in different parts of the jail. Flashlight. Flashlight? Flashlight, yeah. I'm only six. What? This is Abigail. They had the mentality of six and seven year olds. Yeah. Spirits also have the option when they pass to choose an age that they want to be. If they had the mentality of a six year old, Brother. to them, they're six. <gasps> Brother! You're with your brother. Which brother are we talking to right now? Can you go towards your picture? Go towards your picture. And move back, Daniel. If it was you. Can you show us who it is? Is that walking? Sounded like boots. So yeah. Are you the guard that was killed? That was killed by the inmate that escaped downstairs. Are you walking around? Same goes for you. Touch the devices. Any of them for a yes. Let us, 
It's them. Thank you, flashlight. They really like the flashlight. You like that light, right? Getting that shows? Oh, I'm getting it. The camera's getting that. Oh, yeah. That 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 could have been useful, right? Can you turn it off, please? Hey, Thank you. Here. What'd that hey, say? Over here. Hey, we're here. Where are you? Make a noise wherever you are. Um, oh my god, I just saw someone peek from behind that wall. On my life, someone just peeked from behind that wall. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Camera yeah, on. no, like seriously, like on my life right now. Can you show yourself again, please? Hey, over here. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Shit. Ship? Ship? What? Ship. It's not really a ship down. No, we're not really near water. Did I just see somebody? Oh my god, I guess that's not a racing out of my mind. Like it just went that way. Tell me who I just saw right now. Tell me who peeked around the corner. Can you do a clear knock somewhere on the wall or the cell door? I heard that last time, okay? Someone did that down in the dark side to me last time. So can you do that again? is here. Your left is there. Your left is the cell. Our left is, yeah. Are you in the cell? Go in it. Well, I'll describe the device in there too, okay? I'm actually going to go in here. Yeah. You can spend time with me. The device in here is the same thing. If you touch it, it will go off. So the device in here, okay, is the same thing. If you go on this side, it'll turn red, which means no. If you go on this side, it'll be green. That means yes. That'll help you talk to us with yes or no questions. Be careful on the bed. That's not like a message from me, it's a message from something else. Something's upset with you being on the bed. And it's not, it's not the boys. I understand, just give me a moment right here. Oh, just uh, pressure change on the EDI. Arthur, is this... I'm out again, sorry. Arthur, is this where you sat? In the corner here? Fortune. For some reason, my back is getting insanely cold right now. It's like I'm leaning against a cooler with the... This is weird right now. Those lights might lock because I'm going to step here. It's like my back is leaning towards or leaning on like a giant ice pack. Thank you. Are you upset that I'm in your cell? My body's not here. My body's not here. Yes, we want to know where are they. Can you give us a, some like ideas or clues to where you are? We want to know where you are buried. 
So we can go and say a prayer so you can pass over if you want to. Everything here is harmless. Everything here is to help us communicate. You know what's weird? I feel like my back is leaning towards a, a giant ice pack. It's frozen. I'm gonna take the place of my friend. Right here. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that was straight up freezing my back. So, why do you don't like people sitting on your bed? Can you come near me and touch that light? Right in front of me, that little ball? That would be much appreciated. Keep in mind it's, what, 12 o'clock? So it is, they would be sleeping in it right now. Yeah, but they'd be getting ready because it was 2.30 when they were hung or something. Yeah, but it's not on the same day that they're hung. It's near the time that you got hung. Are you... Are you stressed? Are you afraid? Insist. Yes, I insist a bit because we want to help you. We want to establish a communication with you. Please. Arthur. Colin. Colin? Are you looking for a Colin? Whoa, whoa. The camera just got super blurry beside you. Something moved down there. It's like a footstep. If it's you that's moving, can you come and touch one of the devices, please? Is your back getting cold? A bit, but... Really? It's more with my nose. Like, it's cold, but like right here. Well, picture in September too, eh? There would be no heat. They would be freezing. Mm. Maybe they're trying to... Were you cold when you were here waiting for your execution? That's right. Hey Arthur, were you cold when you were here waiting for your execution? Eugene. Eugene. They're really draining the batteries. It just went from three batteries down to one. Really? Mm-hmm. Are you affecting our equipment? Are you draining the batteries? Don't be afraid, boys. Everything here is harmless. It's going to help you. It's going to help us. Do you want us to go alone now? To try and talk to you? Would that make it easier? Just as I explained on that triangle thing, okay? Yes or no? Yes or no? The blue light that's flashing near my feet? Can you go on either side to tell us yes or no if you want us to go in different places alone? Once again, if you go on my right side, on my left side, sorry, it's going to light up green. If you go on my right side, it's going to light up red for no. And on the left side, it's green for yes. So do you want us to go in different places alone? Frito. Do 
Prido. We had that name coming earlier also. Prido. It's P R E A D O. Could have named Predator. Did you consider yourself as Predators? Um, Jeff. Sex offenders. Yeah. They were here. Right here. Are we talking to a sex offender? Did you come in did you commit some sexual crimes? Tell us the crime that you committed. Whoa, the camera's all blurry. Are you taking my energy? I have many regrets. <sighs> what are some of your regrets? Can you tell us some of them, please? Did you regret killing that man for that baby? I think we're talking about one of the offenders, man. I think so, too. Yeah. Did you regret what you did? If you assaulted somebody, if you sexually assaulted somebody, did you regret what you did? Triangle is out of battery. Wow. Really? Look, it's solid blue. That's what it means when it's out? Yep, it's not flashing anymore. Uh. So we put when it's not flashing because it's drained. We just used it yesterday. No, we barely even used it. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Like it's, it's... And usually that goes for a whole investigation. Yeah. Now it's, look, it, it does what it did at Hinsdale. Some, something right now is draining. I, I have almost no battery here. Is it's that draining? Trashing. How many That's I have on my, 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 my big battery? Um, you're at three quarters, 51. Big 51. 51 on it your was a, It was a hot, at a hundred percent when we started. Just up here? Uh, downstairs and up here. There's no way it's at 51. That's a one of these like the big batteries. In usually, the long lasting ones, right? Yes. That uh, I would probably be at 75. Oh my god. Wow. Did that? Did the rampart just go off? Yeah, yes. I have a little bit ago. I think we might have to charge some of our stuff because. Like this, this battery is flashing red. Exactly. Really? Yeah. Look, guys, no more battery. Nope. There you go. That's crazy, man. <laughs> That's actually crazy. Um. All right. So right now. I'm completely in the dark, in the dark side right now. I got a night vision strapped to my back. I'm the only mother in this wing right now. Hello? Who's here? Got a recorder recording right now. The road. The road. So whatever's... I think this is still recording right now. Yeah, so the camera behind me is recording. So if there's an anomaly behind me, it's gonna catch it. Oh my God, my light's dying already. Who's doing this to my light right now? I just, I have no idea what's happening right now. I have so many questions to ask. Oh my God, just being down here, I got the shivers right now, guys. So if you guys do not know. Oh, what the, what the f is that? Holy f I swear I just saw someone in the darkness right there. Oh, right there, guys. Up to down is where the bodies would officially be hung. I don't want to pass this threshold right here. Hello? So I do have the camera on the back. 
or the camera on my back so I can see possibly the shadow figure that's seen down this corridor. It is running, so if the man is look, looking at me right now, it's gonna catch it. Can you knock on one of the cells again for me? Oh, right there. Thank you. Do you guys sleep in the afterlife? <sighs> guys, I'm not even joking right now. The amount of energy that is around me in this exact moment is unbelievable. I came to get answers as to where the boys could possibly be buried. I had to come back because I really wanted to know. We were so close, literally this close. I want to prove to people that you're really here. Please do your best to make a sound. <sighs> what in the f I'm sorry, I just saw someone there and I heard something. Oh, this spot right now. Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, are you part of the grounds here? I gotta back up right now. Oh, being underneath that right now is crazy. Thank you for appearing earlier, Abigail. What about in here? I'm in this cell right now. I'm in the cell with the green light. I'm in here. This is the room that apparently a lot of people experience stuff in. Somebody out there? Poke. Just felt a poke on my arm. Still recording, so. Need help. You need help? Well, what can I do? Why don't you try and move on? I'm not trying to kick you out from where you are in your dimension. I'm just trying to, trying to help you. I don't agree with what happened to you and to the boys and May Bannister. I wish it didn't have to go down like that. There's 
there's a gust of wind. There's a gust of wind right here. Did you just walk right here? I'm doing a lot better than last time, but guys, it's still beyond, beyond something. I can't explain this right now. What can I do to help you? Terrifying. Ah, what the f oh. 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 Yeah. Son of a Arthur, we came in contact with you last time. We were we were trying to reach out to you. Are you with me right now? I'm gonna listen for you, okay? Give me your best shot to tell the world what you wanna hear, okay? I'm on your side. I do not agree what happened to you and Daniel. And I totally understand if you don't wanna see your mom in the afterlife, okay? I really do understand that. I'm just trying to see it from the outside and even though you guys are gone from the world we i still respect you and i wish i could actually be your friend okay so i'm gonna listen for it's you. us it's us it's us thank you thank you guys thank you so much what's your message They never found me. They never found you. You're talking about your, you're talking about where you're buried, right? Because that's where we're trying to help you with too. We're actually trying to find where you're buried. So if that's what you're talking about, lead me right to you. We're going to check in the morning. We're going to check in the morning for your graves. My girlfriend Chelsea is going to help us, okay? She has dowsing rods which will actually help you communicate as well. Or if right now, you could potentially just tell us where you're buried, okay? I'll help you if you just tell us, okay? I'm talking to both of you guys right now. This is crazy. This is, lit this is literally the boys right now. Help us. Yes, I'm trying to help you. Oh my God. Guys, I think someone's trying to prevent them from either moving on or f prevent people from finding them. Someone truly did not believe. Like, I f what if people from the town, from, from their time, w did not agree with the boys and really hated their guts? What if in the afterlife they're preventing them from moving on? Preventing alive people from finding their graves or where they're buried? What if that's the case? This is crazy right now. I think I'm just uncovering something. Boys, I'm gonna help you, okay? I'm gonna help you too. I'm gonna help you get some closure and I'm gonna try and do my best to help you move on. Thank you for communicating with us or with me, okay? I want to be your safety outlet. You can come to me if you want to be safe. 
You can come to me if you want to. Hear us whisper. Okay. Okay. Need help. Boys, I'm going to help you. I'm listening for your whisper. Suspiria. Quarter died. This quarter straight up died right now. <laughs> Son of a. battery's dead on the camera. It's still recording, but there's no battery. That usually shows the battery. Oh my god, the battery is... Oh! Someone just yelled. Thank you, boys. I'll be right back, okay? Oh my god, the battery is... Oh! Someone just yelled! Oh my god, the battery is... Oh! Someone just yelled! Oh my god, the battery is... Oh! Someone just yelled! Because back in the day, it, so they so they won't scare. Uh, well, no. some of the prisoners were really um, uh, superstitious, and having bodies buried in the yard could have uh, prevent some prisoners of going in the yard. So sometimes they would bury the prisoners or the dead right outside of the walls or right outside of the, the fence so the prisoners it would be a gruesome reminder of yeah. what would happen if you commit a, a more severe crime than the one that you've committed right and it, it is written and it is recorded that the boys after their hanging were buried behind the jail so this yes. would be in my you okay the, the, yeah. the land I have an idea. My Natasha said they would bring them to execute them. They would be hanged. Then they would come outside and bury the bodies, and you'd be able to see from death row them burying the bodies. So I wonder if I were to run into death row, go into one of the cells, and see 
if you're standing out here, see if I can see you because I don't know if they'd be able to see them being buried right in the yard, you know? So it, it would prove that they would be buried kind of... Do you see where my brain's going? Because the dark side is right there. And they remember yeah. Natasha said that they would be able to see them burying them yeah. while they're in their cell. Exactly. Yeah. So, right so like there. even right here, you can kind of see a row of uneven ground. And especially you know, right and here, you see that the, the ground is more depressed than those other spots. So those other spots could be bodies, like Natasha said, bodies buried like in a cloth. And this probably would be the boys because they're the only one that were buried in a box. Yeah. And when the box collapsed, well, the ground went down. All right, well, let's see what we got. It might be a little windy. Actually, let me redo that. Do I have permission to douse on this land? Cross the rods if I do. It's not the wind, guys. It is not. Thank you. Can you uncross them? Thank you. Okay. Am I speaking with the Bannister brothers right now? So you cross the rods for yes, or you separate them for no? And when I say separate, I mean like this. So are you the Bannister brothers? Oh. No. Okay. Okay. Are you someone who is buried on these grounds? Oh my god. Okay. Can you point to me the direction of where you are buried? Are you buried in the dandelion field over there? I can't protect you. Don't worry, I can protect myself. Are you buried right in front of me in the dandelion field? Yeah. Oh. During the dive. Oh my god. Yes. Okay. If I were to take five steps in front of me, would I be close to you? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Oh my I god. I knew it. I'm gonna They're take five right steps. here. One, two, three, three four, four, five. Look, you have a depression a, yeah. there. You have depressions right here. I, I really, I don't mean to be disrespectful if I am standing on top of you. Me neither. I'm sorry if I stepped on you. And wow. Um, am I standing or are one of us standing over top of where you are buried? There's some wind right now. Yeah, well, I'm trying so I'm to. I'm gonna try to let that pass. Should I move to the right? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Can I, t well, um, how do I word that? If I take two steps to the left, will I be closer to you? Oh, that was a strong cross. So that would be that depression right there. Right there. And yeah. you, can you feel the ground under your feet? It's yeah. kind of soggy. Yeah. I was standing right there and I feel the, 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 the ground. Julia. The, the ground right there, guys, is kind of squishy. Um, are there eight people buried near us right now? Keep getting the number eight. The, on yeah. the fence? Yeah. Are you tapping the fence right now? Are you tapping the fence right now? That was weird. It's been... We, we had stronger winds and it didn't hurt that. No, not at all. So, I know that you're buried here. Um, are you able to point me to where the brothers, the Bannister brothers, are buried? Use these rods and point to me to where they are, please, if you can. 
Oh my god. They flung to the left. Okay. If I take five steps towards the fence, going straight, will I be close to the brothers? SHHH, listen. Shh, listen. Yo, it, it's a shush. Shush, listen. Shush, listen. Remember last night on yeah. the Estes method? I won't go too much into it because I want you to watch the other one, but the spirit, you kept saying shh. shh. Yep. You shushed oh. us. You and the fence, the fence just, just topped. Yep. Ask one, if they're... Two, two, three, four, five. Should I take any more steps forward? Yes. Okay, I'm going to take two steps forward, okay? One, two. Can you please point to me where they are now? Oh. Should I take two steps to the left? Oh. Oh. Major depression, right? Yeah, where I'm right standing. there. I'm going to get off that. The, the ground is soft right there. Yeah. Am I? Am I? I'm so sorry if I am. Am I standing over top of the brothers? I knew it. Oh! I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Last time we were oh. here, when we were doing this. Did you say mom? Moan. Moan. Last time when we were here and we were doing this, 20 feet from the door led us to around right the, here. The fence line. Would have been the fence and line. I remember I was Outside very drawn of the fence line. to this specific area in the last video we were here the vicinity this could be their vicinity all right here so they may not be where you're standing but like right in this vicinity you were right here last time too right in this side so that would be if bill had to do gpr that would be the place to do gpr yeah i just want to confirm am i in the vicinity of the banister brothers burial ground Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you so much for communicating with us. What did Spirit Talker say? Mabel. <gasps> Mabel. May Bannister. Mm. Were you trying to say Her May real Bannister? Her name is it Mabel Bannister? Because May could be a short name for Mabel. True, eh? Are you able to point me to where yes. any? <gasps> oh! <gasps> wow. If her name, we gotta Google that. If her name is Mabel. Bannister, man, I'm shitting Tasha, myself. I'm sure she will know. That just said yes. Oh. Dude. I got like a really strong smell of like cologne or something. Are you boys wearing cologne today? Not me. Are you? I, I did, but. That is, doesn't smell like yours. I don't know though. Usually I put Lacoste, but I didn't put, I just put on the market. <laughs> It's kind of smell like fabric or something, though. Eh? They gotta smell something. All right, well. May, may wait, I'll, may, uh, I want to see if maybe it can point me to any other, any other grounds of where they could be buried. Can you point the rods to where anyone else is buried here? Near the arugula. I mean, they do think that they're all buried in that patch of grass, which is why they don't cut it. But the thing is, with that fence that is right there, makes me believe that could have, that could have been somebody else's grounds. Because yeah, it could have that fence could have connected to here maybe, or like yeah. diagonal to the. Mm -hmm. All right, that was really weird. What just happened? Like, what just happened right now? You were going in with Jeff to see the cell. I was standing here facing this way. And then I turned, and then all I saw was a woman in white just walk. I was facing this way towards the cell, and all I see, like, from, like, in the corner of my eye like this is a woman in white just go from, like, here, just walk along the grass line there, get to that tree, and just goes away. And then I turned to you to say, like, I just saw the woman in white and then your camera fell. So, 
Jeff went inside to see if he can see us from the outside and see where they're buried, but this post closest to the stairs to where you're standing is exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven feet. Whoa, but look how much it goes down right here. Right there? Yeah, it goes down a lot. So like, it's weird because you can kind of see the, the, like the lane or the, yeah. what do you call it? I also oh. just saw the woman in white. Corner of my eye, she was just walking from like the, the fence line there to about where that tree is. That window Isabella. is right in line with the cell of the prisoner that escaped and killed that guard. Right in line with that one. Oh my! I was looking at, and the you could see I was like us, right at you. And you could, like, would you? Do you think you'd be able to see in the yard, or do you like? Was it well, past the yard? Standing on this belt, probably. Yeah. But what if there would be people up there? People well, in the bunk beds would even, see. Even from over there, you would have seen it. But this guy in his cell would have seen it. We're gonna have to talk to Kim. Was May Bannister Mabel? Mabel Bannister was it a real name? Because we had the name Mabel come in, and I say, was it Mabel Bannister? Was it short for May? Was it short for Mabel? And he said yes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not positive on Me that, neither. so I can't I say don't know, so. for that sure. Mm -hmm. That was weird. That was a whole weird yes. series of events right there. Because before, like, I saw the woman in white, and then I turned to Omar to be like, I just saw the woman, and then I saw his camera just get pushed down. Yeah. I'm attached. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. You can't attach yourself to us. Not okay? saying you that. They're attached here. to the land. They like it if here. If you're attached to the land, that's that's better. Please do not follow us though, okay? Yeah. They won't. Stay here with us. Yep. <laughs> we'll keep you company, I promise. <laughs> that was that was strange. That yeah, was so we figured out about seven feet from this post. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is this divot. Right and, and there, that, that rhubarb grows like crazy. Two lights. Rhubarb? We got rhubarb in Estes last time. We never planted that. Oh, yeah. You never planted your rhubarb, nothing? It just grows like that every year. Wow. wow. They're near the rhubarb. Twins. I'm pretty sure they would have Twins. Probably. Twins. That just gave me goosebumps. Yeah. Twins. Oh. Even though they're 1921, they're still Mark, look yeah, alike. we're buried together. So oh. you're leading us to the rhubarb area of vicinity, right? Thank you so much. That was crazy. Yeah. I think that's the closest we're going to get to. Because my theory was to people that possibly passed away in the town, they're long dead now, right? What if those people found the boys in the afterlife and are preventing them for any sort of closure, even for us? alive people to get any sort of closure here. Well, it wasn't the boys who told me they were buried here. It was someone else who's buried on the grounds that told me the vicinity of where they are. Yeah. I think they're asking for help. Last night they were asking for yeah, like, they help were us. Asking for help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can't find my body. I got that right on the spirit mm -hmm. box. Never a dull moment around here. No. <laughs> no. No. Nope. I mean, Natasha is so used to all of this stuff right now, but when we come, it's just kind of like so fascinating to see and try and figure it out, you know. If Bill ever gets one of those ground radar companies to come through, you gotta let us know. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you know? they are, yeah. Yeah, that's a, a big hope of ours in the near future to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't even need to tear it up. You can just see, Just right? so I know where they are, so we can mark that part of the yard and say, hey, this is where they are. We can give them a cross or a marker just as a sign exactly. of respect. And yep. And with the GPR, you're gonna say, you're gonna see how they are laid. So it's gonna be easier, like probably to, to mark on the ground, to be careful. This is, yeah. this is a tomb. Like mm -hmm. we're probably stepping on somebody yep. right now. Mm -hmm. Very good possibility. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that's, that's a wrap for this episode. Mm -hmm. Fascinating stuff. Um, big thank you to the boys and to everyone who communicated with us. We'll hope, see you soon. Yeah, hope yeah. to see you guys when we come back, whenever that may be. Jeff, you coming back eventually? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was just that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. <laughs> because when I go somewhere, it's like 
okay, I have to go again. Yeah. I have to go again. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's almost like every time you come here, they just amp it up just a little bit more. Yeah, you know? Exactly. And just releasing little bits more information just to entice you enough to get you back here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to link the Airbnb. You can actually stay in this jail. It's an Airbnb. Natasha will tour you around if you guys do plan on coming. She'll give you the whole rundown. She'll take so, good care of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to link that down below and um, go and show them some love and all that. It does not let me down. Every time I come here, it does not mm -hmm. let me down at all. So, I think that's a wrap.